Okay, you're registered to vote. Now, when, where, and how do you cast your ballot? First, when can you vote? Elections for members of the General Assembly, Governor, and other statewide offices, Connecticut's representatives in the United States Congress, and President of the United States are always held in even-numbered years. Election Day is the Tuesday after the first Monday in November, and primary elections for those offices are held in August. City or town elections are held in odd-numbered years, usually also in November, although a few towns in Connecticut hold municipal elections in May. Polls are open from 6 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night. As long as you're in line at your polling place by 8 p.m., you will be able to cast a ballot. So where do you vote? Your polling place will usually be at a school, library, or other public building. Your town's Registrar of Voters can help you locate your polling place, or you can look it up online at the Secretary of the State's website. When you arrive at the polling place, you'll have the chance to examine a sample ballot and ask questions about it. When you're ready to vote, a poll worker will find your name on the list of registered voters and ask you for identification. You can show any pre-printed form that has your name and address, or name and signature, or name and photograph. If you have something that just has even just your name and address on it. So that's where it comes in, the utility bill, uh, something addressed to you at your home address, anything like that. You cannot be denied the chance to vote as long as you are registered. And even if you don't have anything and you're on the list, then you vote by affidavit. By signing the affidavit, you confirm your identity under oath and under penalty of perjury. Once you're checked in, a clerk will hand you a ballot inspect it to make sure there are no stray marks on it, and then take it to one of the privacy booths where you'll find a pen. To cast your ballot, completely blacken the oval next to the candidate name or ballot question. It's very important with these optical scan ballots that you fill in the oval completely. And many times people will check the name of the person they want to vote for, or they'll circle the name of the person they want to vote for, not realizing that that's not going to count because the optical scan reader is only going to read what's inside that bubble. If you want to vote for a write-in candidate, blacken the write-in oval for that office and write the candidate's name under it. Every polling place should have accommodations for people with disabilities. And they are basically a vote by phone system. A poll worker will familiarize the voter with the phone system, which has large raised numbers for the visually impaired. The moderator enters ballot information, then the voter listens and responds to prompts. A fax machine prints out a completed ballot, which the voter places in a ballot box. So every registered voter should be able to cast a ballot. But what if you have a question or a problem at the polling place? The first thing you would do is ask to see the moderator. The moderator is the person in charge of that polling place above all others. If you still have a problem, you can call the Secretary of the State's office. We have a hotline on every election day, and we have volunteer attorneys serving all across the state. Hotline staff will make sure that qualified voters can cast a ballot, and they'll also investigate any reports of fraud or irregularities at your polling place. But what if you can't get to your polling place on election day? Well, that's where absentee ballots come in. And that's the topic of our next video.